All right, what's up YouTube? This is Paul Friedman, Fossil Fool, coming at you from the streets of Oakland. Today we've got a cool little mission happening I just thought I'd throw on the camera. We're picking up some plywood and some foam, four by eight sheets. This is um, a load that most people would assume you need a pickup truck for. And I don't have one of those. I do have an electric car. But I got up this morning and I'm like, Hey, if I'm not going to haul this plywood and foam by bike, who is? And it's fun to do so. So I wanted to just show the process. One of the cool things about Oakland is that in this part of Oakland, things are pretty flat and we're able to access the Home Depot and the plywood store with specialty plywoods within seven miles of total round trip riding. And with the electric bike and with the flat ground, this is just physically not a very demanding trip. So it really is gonna come down mostly to just knowing the loading system and being able to load it correctly. One of the other things that you can do with a pickup truck or a car is carry a passenger. I'm not carrying a passenger today, but I am carrying little Cairo. Cairo, hi. Oh, what a sweetheart. So you can even bring your sidekick with you and do these kind of missions if you want to. So it's all, it's all possible. Um, the bike that I'm using is the Combi 2000. This is Rock the Bikes electrified version of the Yuba Combi. The Yuba Combi is, in my opinion, the best bang for the buck in the mid-tail cargo bike world. This is a, a small cargo bike that has a very stout frame, really good brakes, um, good parts quality, really nice paint job, just good looking affordable cargo bike, good choice for electrification. We're using the Grin G-Mac motor for this uh, bike. We also offer it with the Bafang 750 and both of those are really good choice for a uh, cargo bike. So we're heading right now to a local plywood and hardwood store called McBeef and they sell eighth inch plywood of which we're gonna buy a couple of sheets. We're now rolling right up. This is a spot that I've done quite a few stops at for boat building and for project making. So I'm just gonna bring the bike right to where I need it. This is two sheets of eighth inch plywood. Technique is to clamp them together for the purposes of having a place to strap. And they're four by eight sheets and these are nine foot straps. The trailer has these nice large holes. They make it. You need to close up, buddy. And I got, we're gonna get, get, get out of here doing this as quickly as I can. And so this is now too, kind of like a little bit too flimsy. And this is one of the scenarios that I was a little worried about. So now the plywood is kind of like pulled down to the middle. Now we're gonna get some diagonals going. Now it's standing up on its own. So this is kind of cool. So it's already looking like it might work. <laughs> but once you get in motion, you know it's a lot harder. Stack our odds with an extra diagonal here. Why don't you just bring like a couple milk crates that you could put it flat and not hit the wheels? These sheets are flimsier than the sheets that I often load. Oh, this might not work. Hopefully they don't crack. Let's tighten it up. And it might work. And we're, we're being told to leave the store because uh, <laughs> we got here just in time. So I'm just gonna hope for the best. Give one more treat to Cairo, who's been waiting so patiently. You've been such a good girl. Oh, I'll give you a whole one. I love you. Good. That's gonna take her a while. Let's go. <laughs> All right, next stop is the Home Depot. The load is a little bit flimsy, so we're just gonna ride slow. Oh, shit! As a cargo biker, this has happened to me countless times. This moment is the frustration of cargo biking. Should we repeat the same idea and just hope for better results.
why do this? Why do this when cars exist? It's just, you gotta have a certain personality. You gotta have something to prove. You gotta feel like you wanna prove something to yourself. And like, you just don't wanna support this business as usual attitude while we're having heat waves and everything. And like, you know, you just gotta be like, God damn it, I'm gonna do it by bike sometimes, you know? Got the car or you don't have a car. I didn't have a car until last year, 43 years without a car. So we're gonna try it again. And just don't turn hard left. No turns. Only very gradual turns. I mean, I've dropped eggs on the street. I've dropped olive oil. I've done this particular run before and had this exact same thing happen. And of course, this time I thought it was gonna be easy. I think we should try a riser. The plywood did not work very well, so we're going to try a different idea, which is to create simply like an elevated platform and then strap the sheet goods to it. Okay, so we made it to the Home Depot, the big box store of all big box stores. And it just brings back up this issue of just like, why bother? Why bother trying to do something by bike when you're in a place like this and we're about to buy pink foam, a petroleum product anyway. It doesn't really matter about the contradictions. You have to just accept that we're living in a world of contradictions. We're living in a fossil fuel powered world. I can't eat without trucks delivering my food, even if I'm eating organic. It's just, there's a certain feeling to doing it by bike. So when I'm biking in the street with this pink foam heading back to the shop and people are seeing the pedaling through the street, it's, it sends out a vibration. It sends out a pedaling vibration that you can see from a quarter of a mile away. That person's pedaling. That person is doing their own transportation. I really did want to. Anyway, loading it should be better this time. It's splitting. And they only have one. Oh, here's something right down here. This is not a full sheet, but maybe they'll sell it to me for a discount. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick tight turn here and see how tight of a turn I can do. Turn. This is something that you can do with a bike and a trailer that you cannot do with a car is bring your vehicle right to the space so you only load once. Where are the barcodes? Yeah, that's the barcode. Okay, now let's bust out the cam straps. We're not in the hot sun, we're not in the hustle and the bustle.
plenty of friction, but I was car free for 43 years. And during those 43 years, I spent a lot of time thinking essentially that I was better than other people because I was doing it by bike. Then I got a car, but I happened to really like it. Now I'm reckoning with that. My puppy likes being in the passenger seat and she likes sticking her head out the window. And you know, the thing, like I'm actually enjoying it. So why keep doing this stuff? Because it's only two miles. It's only two miles and, uh, and it's only a couple of sheets of foam and I've invested already in the tools to do this. And I want to see a world where people do this kind of thing. I want to be one of those people. It's a collective and an individual impact at the same time. We have to act as individuals pedaling in the street, moving through car culture with a smile to hope. Thank you for shopping at the Home Depot. Okay, it's gonna swing real wide. Thanks for that discount. Got out of Home Depot with two sheets of foam. We got a discount on both of them. I believe that this mission was about the same amount of time as if I had brought the car. So right now we are heading back to the shop. The foam seems to be staying put. The idea to elevate it above the wheels and make it flat was definitely the right approach. That would have made the plywood a lot safer. And we're doing it. We're moving through car culture with a smile. I got my puppy. She seems pretty happy. Uh, okay, let's just pretend this was a pickup truck run and that we had done a total of six miles of driving. And let's just say that the pickup truck is getting like, you know, 24 miles to the gallon in city driving. So we just saved a quarter of a gallon of gas, which does not sound like that much, but when you burn gas, it multiplies by eight in terms of the number of pounds of carbon that go into the atmosphere. So a quarter of a gallon is two pounds of liquid, but by the time it becomes CO2 in the atmosphere, it's 16 pounds. And that's just one run. And that's just one person. Let's just say a hundred people did it. Now you're at 1600 pounds. That's almost a ton. If this YouTube video gets liked, subscribed, and commented, and shared, individual action with collective action, that's the magic of biking. I'm doing this by myself. It's an individual action but I'm part of a movement and I want to encourage you to be part of that movement because it is fun, it is effective, and it does make a small difference. And if we all do it together, then it makes a big difference. I'm stubborn. I, I want it. I want it. I want to go get it by bike. This trailer was designed to be a general purpose utility trailer. It was not designed for carrying four by eight sheets. So this trailer, if I really wanted it to do four by eight sheets, we could come up with something like maybe there would be something in the middle that you know the sheets lean up against these are the rock the bike straps we do sell these um, over on rockthebike.com and they are the silkiest webbing much higher quality than what you can get at a big box store like home depot this is the home depot grade one it's it's thinner and um, not quite of a as nice of a material the buckle seems to be about the same quality, but the Rock the Bike one, what makes it really nice is the quality of the webbing. It's easy on the hands, it's silky, it's very good in tension, has incredible tensile strength. It's similar to seatbelt webbing, whereas this um, rumply stuff from the Home Depot is just not as nice, not as inspiring. Maybe feels like it would get weaker over time with use. This conception that cars and trucks are easy and that bikes are the harder way to do it is not necessarily true. So if you look at this truck behind me, the bed on this truck is not eight feet long. So this is like a, a less than six foot bed. So then the tailgate would be down, the foam would be up and you'd end up maybe tying it to these uprights, which would be pretty, pretty easy. And then not all trucks have a lumber rack. This is a pretty good generalized loading surface. We added the milk crate to get the foam above the wheels and that made all the difference because trying to go for vertical with a flat trailer wasn't working. But with a little bit of creativity, we solved that problem. Looking at this car, like this Mazda right here, like these roof rack things are only, they're like three feet apart. Like they're, 
this would not work. Like the foam would be getting lifted up. Sometimes bikes are better, like a bike with a good trailer system might actually be better than an SUV. Like you can't put an eight foot sheet of foam inside an SUV and you need a pretty long bed on a pickup truck to easily load it. Being open-minded and using the right tool for the job sometimes might lead to using the bike with the trailer.